Hello devs, today I want to share something interesting with you. Uh, lately I started working on a new app where we would have quite a lot of uh, paginated lists and uh, we were discussing what kind of pagination we want. So we either infinite scroll or just regular pagination. And I was thinking like uh, infinite scroll is kind of intuitive. It, uh, it is more user friendly in most cases, but at the same time we uh, need an ability so that users can share a link to a specific page uh, and can navigate to any page at any time. Uh, so I came up with this uh, idea. I'm not sure if it's been uh, used uh, before. I think, yeah, uh, like for sure someone, somebody has used it. Uh, but uh, the idea is quite interesting. So why not combine uh, infinite scroll with pagination? Uh, and I call it sparse list. I don't know. Uh, you, you can find your own name for this but I'm not sure what's, uh, whether there is already a name for this kind of pagination. So as you can see, I have a quite huge uh, data table with uh, backend having uh, 70k elements, entities. Uh, and uh, what's cool about it, like how it works, is you can both scroll and use normal pagination. And backend, like request to the backend, only load uh, a specific portion that is currently in the viewport, plus uh, some buffer. So uh, as you can see, if you if you open, like currently I have mock uh, backend, uh, actually quite interesting mocking. Uh, I'll tell you about it later. But uh, the thing is, like if we jump to, uh, okay, this is in cache already. Mm, if we load some portion, uh, you can see uh, it's uh, not um, kind of it's dynamic. So here we have skip this huge number and limit 32. Uh, and uh, yeah, if we scroll up a bit uh, more, like we only load the missing portion. So limit is 19 this time because we already had the elements loaded uh, after scroll up this time limit 14 so it's uh, it could load like just four but uh, we also load some buffer uh, some more elements than we actually need uh, so to set uh, up this kind of pagination there are quite of quite a few uh, actually just one major uh, restriction on the backend side so uh, the backend should accept uh, instead of page and page size, it should ac accept skip and limit. So you can name obviously as uh, as you want, but the main idea is uh, that page size, first of all, it's not fixed. Uh, so we can uh, skip as much as we want and limit uh, the returned uh, array uh, as much as we want. Uh, the page and page size wouldn't work here because uh, uh, page size kind of tells, uh, implicitly tells you how much to skip. So if we have like page three with page size 10, for example, uh, we would have to uh, skip kind of 30 elements we, uh, and uh, 30 is because uh, the skip would depend on the page size, right? And uh, it has to be divisible by the page size. In this case, we can skip any number of elements and limit by any number. So it's more flexible. I think generally uh, this kind of uh, pagination on the backend is more flexible and uh, I don't see any reason why uh, backend can't implement this kind of skip limit uh, pagination. So it's it's supported by most pagination libraries, and uh, if you have access to the backend, you can uh, for sure make this kind of pagination out of uh, any existing pagination you have. So, yeah, as you can see, very optimized in terms of uh, what we request, uh, and 
also backend should return the total count of elements so considering all the filtering yeah, if we uh, filter by something uh, like it, it's quite common for the backend to return uh, the count if we have a pagination it's not common uh, maybe not as common to return uh, total count if we have infinite scroll but for pagination uh, so since it's a combination of scrolling and pagination we still need to have the total count of elements uh, so you can see we can scroll to any page at any time only missing elements would be loaded uh, we can also uh, like the pages are actually links so we can open a new tab and basically the scroll position would appear in the corresponding place so uh, yeah, that probably solves all potential problems of both infinite scroll pagination and uh, just regular pagination. So we discussed a bit what we expect from the backend to be able to build this kind of pagination. Nothing special over there, uh, but hopefully you can see the benefits of, of it. So to recap, uh, we are able both to scroll to any page to jump to any page at any time and we request only the portion we need so even if we have like loaded for example seventh page and the ninth page if we jump to the eighth page it would load just the elements in between that are missing so let's just oh we, we have it in cache already but uh, yeah you see the idea it's very flexible we can share links uh, to any scroll position uh, open a new tab and table would be scrolled immediately to the portion we shared. So let's now discuss briefly on how to implement this kind of pagination on the front end because it definitely does require some more work and a bit more complex than implementing generic uh, infinite scroll or just basic pagination. So the main idea is having, uh, first of all, we definitely need to have virtual scroll so uh, you can use any library here i'm using ag grid uh, but uh, it can be not just a table obviously it can be um, cards list for example just uh, main requirement is uh, a raw size or like element height should be uh, the same for all the elements but i think this uh, holds for most lists uh, so yeah uh, now we need to have a sparse array uh, so basically when we get the count from the backend uh, from the first request we uh, we send so total count yeah we need to create an array of size of this total count here like for example 70k elements and fill it with null so this operation is very fast uh, it's I think uh, internally it doesn't even loop through all these 70k elements to fill them with nulls like uh, let's have 700,000 elements you see it's happening ha very fast and also it uh, only needs to happen once uh, on the first uh, request with the total count so we can have this sparse array in memory somewhere in the state uh, for example in react right it uh, wouldn't occupy that much memory because it's just nulls. Uh, so we allocated it once and uh, then we would uh, fill in the missing indexes one, once we receive the portion of elements from the backend. So uh, for example here, right? Uh, we have, uh, so count, we've set it up. We initialize sparse array just the first time. And then we have this uh, chunk of elements uh received from the backend and then we would uh, just loop uh, so we we need to track uh, which skip limit we send to the backend so here we have uh, skip 58 and limit 21 so we would loop through uh, starting with 58 and uh, ending with 58 plus 21 basically and fill in the nulls 
uh, with uh, the actual data we received from the backend. So this operation is not expensive. We still have the same sparse array. Uh, reference is the same. We just fill in the blanks. Um, yeah, that's the major idea behind it. Uh, so we can jump to any page. We load it. We fill in the missing indexes. Uh, we use virtual scroll uh, to render the elements, only those that are in viewport plus some extra buffer. And this way, uh, yeah, we can both scroll and uh, jump to any page and as well as uh, share a link to a specific scroll position uh, using skip and limit. Um, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see uh, like the actual implementation. Uh, as a brief note, I'm using here uh, React query as well uh, to cache uh, all the received data. So uh, I have separate cache keys, obviously, for each uh, sorting uh, and for each filtering. But if I uh, reuse the same sorting filtering, I uh, get the data instantly. Mm, so we we can also consider like user behavior in such uh, scenarios where like a normal user won't, won't uh, do this kind of stuff normally, right? Like, uh, so uh, this should be uh, optimized enough for most normal users. Uh, there are, of course, rooms for improvement. For example, uh, like I could not fill it with null maybe that takes some time uh, here like the empty state of the array is some special property like some special placeholder for a missing value uh, so if you have uh, some custom rendering uh, you could use this as well like that would probably be more complex because you can't loop through empty empties right uh, but you can you can still do it like i remember in one company i was doing something like this uh, this is uh, just one optimization that comes to mind otherwise uh, yeah as i said the limit uh, to this is only like lim limitation is uh, the raw height has to be the same or like element height has to be the same across all the list you can still use uh, cards lists, not necessarily a table. Um, yeah. So here, AG grid with uh, virtual scrolling uh, React query. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it for the custom libraries I'm using. Uh, the rest is all implemented uh, by hand. So. Uh, it did require some time, but uh, I think that's worth it. Please let me know in the comments if you want some more in-depth explanation how this thing works, or maybe even a walkthrough video of building this kind of pagination. And one last thing I wanted to talk about briefly is how I do the mocking of the requests. So as you can see, if I jump to some page, we actually have a network request. Uh, and we can inspect it as usual. So, uh, but we don't have a actual backend here, uh, and uh, all this happens on the let's say front end, on the mock level. Uh, and what allows me to do this is a service worker provided by this uh, cool library called MSW. Uh, so it provides a service worker, and we can write handlers in this way, right? So uh, pretty easy to set up. I've probably spent just uh, half an hour to uh, get around it and uh, just to understand how all this works and set it up in a monorepo environment, which is normally more complex than just setting up in a, a normal project. Uh, so. It's pretty cool to track it. However, it uh, does have a small pitfall. Uh, so I have a huge list of seven, 70,000 elements here. And uh, sorting and filtering of these lists uh, take some time. Uh, if they happen on the main thread, they would uh, block 
UI for some time, uh, that uh, caused freezes. But what I did is moved uh, the handler's logic to a web workers. Uh, so although service worker potentially would run on in a separate thread, but uh, the handler's logic of this MSW library uh, happens in the main thread, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, moving uh, this uh, logic of generating entities and sorting them uh, to a web worker made it possible to actually uh, imitate the real backend without blocking the main thread. Uh, yeah, so just a quick idea on how you could mock something in a real cool way. I also use index DB here uh, so that uh, when I re reinitialize the application, uh, like open it in a new tab, for example, entities uh, stay the same. So it generates them only once and then looks up in index DB. Uh, yeah, so I might also release another video about uh, mocking specifically if you are interested. So just let me know in the comments. Mm, thank you for watching.